Hello and welcome to another episode of Many More Games. Um, today's video I'm going to be talking about Age of Sigma and why I think that it's a great fantasy miniatures game for you to begin your collection with. So, first off, let me just say thank you very much to uh, Miss Clara Jeffrey, who I had the great pleasure of working with in Madrid as a teacher. She was a music teacher and she happened to write that song that you heard at the beginning. Um, she said that I could have it as a gift. So again, thank you very much, Clara. So, Age of Sigma, what is it? Well, Age of Sigma is a miniatures game where you collect a series of different armies aligned to different factions. For example, you may collect armies from the forces of order, which are the good guys, and they tend, to, or for the most part, and tend to protect the world from the forces that are trying to destroy it. You may worship the god Nagash and follow the forces of death, um, being necromancers or vampires, or maybe even liches who've risen from the grave to fight battles that they've been fighting for thousands of years. You, create, you could actually follow the forces of destruction. These tend to be beastly foes like orcs, goblins, ogres, or even, in some cases, some like, races of super orcs. Even giants find themselves on the side of destruction. And finally, maybe those things aren't quite your cup of tea. Maybe you prefer to be the bad guys. And I'm talking about really bad guys. You could maybe align yourselves with the forces of chaos, whose entire um, entire game plan is to subvert and destroy the world and to put forward their evil god's agenda. So, but how exactly does Age of Sigmar work? Well, Age of Sigmar is a game where, you as I said, you collect a series of miniatures, which you paint yourself, and then you take it uh, to your local gaming store, or maybe even in your own home, you set up a table, and you play a game against a person who also has a set of those miniatures. It's actually a very unintimidating game for beginners. Um, this, for example, is the book. Now, you may think this is massive, and it is. It's a huge book. But out of this entire book, only four pages are actually the rules. And to make it even better, the rules are free and you can download them yourselves online. The book itself contains background, battle plans, which are sort of story-driven scenarios that you can play, and also a host of beautiful images and pictures that uh, depict the different armies and the battles going on in the mortal realms. So, you may have heard of something like this before. Well, you'd be right. This game is actually an evolution um, from the previously much beloved game, Warhammer Fantasy Battles. Now, a lot of you may have heard of Warhammer Fantasy Battles before because of its growing popularity in the video game universe. Games such as Vermintide 1, Vermintide 2, Mordheim, Man of War, and of course, you can't forget, Total War, Warhammer 1, and now 2. What happened, though, is um, there was very, it was very difficult for the miniatures game to expand further, and that's because they kind of um, backed themselves into the corner with the different types of armies that they were producing. And so they had this massive uh, end to ending campaign to say you know, farewell to this previous gaming system. It was called the End Times. And in that, in that point, the entire world got blown up. And yes, the End Times is the same End Times you're playing in in Warhammer Vermintide 1 and 2. And after the world is destroyed... The world sort of created again in another location. There's sort of um, representatives of different elemental planes. And so you have what we call what's called the mortal realms. And each of those realms is reflective of a different element or a different type of gameplay. Age of Sigma is a, 
is set in this world and the different battles and different armies come from these different realms and are often uh, find themselves head to head against each other and fighting to protect what they currently have or to conquer what the enemies that they're fighting have and to make it their own. Age of Sigmar is a really easy game to get into because, first of all, there are three ways, three, in which you can play Age of Sigmar. First of all, you have the open war or the open play, free play way of doing it. What that means is you meet up with a friend, you take out your miniatures. It doesn't matter what miniatures you have. You just take them all out, put them on the board. You come to a gentleman's agreement about what sort of things you should be facing each other with. And then you uh, and then you just play the game with your miniatures with no restrictions. The other way you can play the game is narrative play. And narrative play is when you play the game using different story driven missions, sometimes even linking together into a campaign in order to in order to uh, facilitate your battles. Now, what that will often say is on the campaign sheet, it may say something like one army will be smaller than the others, but that army gets a bonus to make up for it, to represent maybe a final last stand against the forces of evil while you're completely surrounded by the foe. Um, the final way you can play is matched play, and this is for one-off games where you maybe come prepared. You don't really know who you're going to play against, and so you use a system of points in order to decide what force you're going to bring to fight. And then you turn up at your local gaming store, or you call your friends, and you say, you know, let's play a 1,000-point game, or let's play a 2,000-point game. And what the points do is they try to address a balance and introduce a balance into the system so that... In, the, in order to make sure everyone has a good time and everyone's able to play a game and have a chance of winning, um, you can use these points to come up with a sort of a, an even force to, that you can play against anyone with, with the same amount of points. Now, why points aren't included in free play and in narrative play? Well, that's because those games are meant more for people maybe who know each other, or for people who just want to have a good time and play a sto and play through a story. Um, you will often see match play occurring in tournaments. Um, tournaments are uh, very strict about the, what points you can bring. And, um, of course, every tournament needs a system of balancing uh, so as to make sure that everybody has a good time, that everybody has a chance to win. And that's where the points come into the game. There was a lot of controversy when Age of Sigmar first came out because it didn't have or in it didn't include a point system. But Games Workshop listened to the feedback from the community and they and these people were saying, we want to set up a game a, a tournament of Age of Sigma. We don't have a way to do it with a fair balancing system. We've made our own point system, but we feel that maybe you should get involved and make sure that those points are fair. And that's what Games Workshop did. They came out with a book called The General's Handbook, and I'll show you that now. This book here, The General's Handbook. And in The General's Handbook, he has listed all the points for the different armies. This is the second General's Handbook, so it only has the updated points lists. But um, you can get the points um, in all of the books as well. So, um, why do I like Age of Sigma? Well, Age of Sigma is an open game. It's a game where it, it's so different from the previous gaming system, which was very points-focused. Now, um, to draw my own personal experiences, when I was growing up in Singapore, I managed to badger my parents to take me down to the local store, as I mentioned in a previous video, to buy a set of miniatures that I could use to play the game. Now, I bought those miniatures, I painted them up, they were absolutely awful, and I still have them somewhere. Um, I painted them up, and then I took them to my friend's house, and we played a game. It hit my eight spearmen and four bowmen versus his eight lizards and three little lizards or whatever he had I can't remember at this point and we played a game and I think we even made up the rules for the most part because we didn't really know how to play at that point but then the first time I went to my my game shop um, where I thought I might be able to meet other people to play against other people I took my my eight miniatures and they looked at me a little bit derisively and they said you know that's not enough you need to have this you need to have um, cavalry, you need to have heroes, you need to have a little bit of everything, and that's going to cost you approximately about 200 Singapore dollars, about you know 100 euros, because everything was metal at the time, and that meant everything was much more expensive to collect. 
Um, and a very expensive hobby, um, which delighted my parents. Uh, <laughs> but it did give them lots of ideas for birthdays and Christmases uh, over the years. So um, that at least had a silver lining. But now what, what they've done in Age of Sigma is you can walk into your local game store. You can say, I really like these humanoid lizards. I want an entire army made out of humanoid lizards, but I only have, you know, so many euros in my pocket and I'll only, I can only afford to buy this box set. In Age of Sigma open play, you can just open those models up, take them out of the box, stick them together, cut them, sprue them, make sure that they're nice and clean, and then put them on the table and find someone else who will just say, yeah, I'll take a, a unit of elves to fight against your humanoid lizards. And you have a little game with very uh, with only four pages of rules. So it's very simple to learn. This, this is a wonderful development because it makes it such an open game. It means that anybody can get involved. And it means you can just buy, you know, build up your collection slowly. If you don't have the money or you don't have the time to be truly invested in this, in this hobby, and you don't see yourself becoming, you know, one of the world champions of the game, that's fine. Buy what you like, paint what you like, play with it. That's what, it's, that's what the, the appeal is of the open system. As I say, it's, it's open and it's an incredible gateway game. It's very easy to get into. Another thing I absolutely love about this as well is to, to facilitate how easy it is. Games Workshop have been working their behinds off to make sure that they are helping um, the community of gamers in every single way that they can. They have created a series of apps which support gamers. For example, there is the Citadel Painting app. That painting app actually lets you look at a list of miniatures, look at the different colors that they've chosen to paint those miniatures, and they'll give you a guide on exactly what paints you need to buy to achieve that effect. So you're not just wasting your time buying every paint under the sun. You can actually focus your painting on that particular color scheme. They also have created another app, the Warhammer Age of Sigma app, and that app actually includes all the rules for every miniature in the game for free. Let me just repeat that, for free. So you don't actually need to buy any of these books that I have to the side. I buy them because I really like the stories and also because the books do include some extra information. For example, let's say you want to form a certain battalion or a type of army. They sometimes give you special rules for forming that special type of army in the book. They also give you... Um, magical items and different spells that you can use. Now, that, that, that those aren't included on the War Scrolls, but that doesn't mean that you can't still have a really good time with the basic rules. Um, so openness, easy to get into, excellent support from the, uh, from the team. Finally, the thing I really love about Age of Sigmar is it is a move away from traditional fantasy tropes. Okay, so what I mean by that is it's a move away from the traditional Tolkien-esque form of fantasy and actually trying to be more creative about what sort of miniatures they're creating. For example, we all know the traditional three men, elves, dwarfs. And of course, then we have the bad guys, the orcs, and we have the demons and the ogres. Fantastic. That is uh, that is a, um, a lovely style of play, never gets old. I love that fantasy and I'm not disparaging it. But Age of Sigmar tries to take those tropes and kind of change them on their heads a little bit. For example, instead of fighting as a force of elves that are trying to protect the realms of man, maybe in their glittering chain mail, and of course they'll be very good at shooting with arrows and Fantastic in close combat, maybe a bit fragile, but that's, you know, elves are a bit tall and weedy. Um, instead, they'll turn it completely on their head. How about a race of half-elf, half-snake people who are um, bloodthirsty and uh, engage in human sacrifices <laughs> and uh, worship a god who's long dead um, thinking they're worshipping this god, but their leader is actually stealing all the power for herself. That is a, that is uh, maybe you want to play the Blades of K the the Brides of Cain, um, which is a new faction which has just come out for Age of Sigma. Maybe you want to play elves 
of a different, maybe of a different trope entirely. And you want to play underwater elves, elves that ride around on giant eels and ride around the backs of turtles. Yes, you can do that in Age of Sigma. They're called the Idaneth Deepkin, and they're coming for your souls. Yes, they're soul stealers. Maybe you want to play as a race of tree people. Well, that was already an option when we fantasy battle, but now they've been have it expanded into an entire race of people that you can play as. Maybe you want to play as dwarves. Who doesn't love dwarves? Mining, creating, making um, humorous remarks about their own height. Why not? Or maybe you'd rather try something a bit different. Maybe you'd like dwarves that fly. Yes, there are dwarfs that fly in Age of Sigma. They're called the Caradron Overlords, and they fly around in giant, uh, giant airships around the world trying to mine gold, which is sort of vaporized into the air. So uh, there's even dwarves on the back of dragons or dragon-like creatures if you want to play an army like the Fire Slayers, who live underground like traditional dwarves, but in magma-filled chambers and um, basically have tattoos and all sorts of things like uh, ruins beaten into their skin, which are part of their deceased god. So yeah, many, many different exciting examples of things you can play in Warhammer Age of Sigma nowadays. And that's why I really like it. It's very different and very creative. So I don't want to go on too much longer, but I promised you a little introduction to the forces of order, which tend to be the groups that uh, I play. Um, more than others. I have uh, got some other different um, armies, but I'll look at those in another video. So let me show you some examples. This army is called the Stormcast Eternals. The Stormcast Eternals are a race of demigods that have been brought back to life by the god Sigma. You might notice they look a bit Grecian or maybe a bit like Spartans. Well, they are, they're a very destructive army and they've got a wonderful bit of they've got some wonderful background um, that I'll go into in another video. But suffice to say, they are like demigods come back to life. So imagine an army full of Hercules, and that's what you've got. Um, another army that we could use, and I'll just move these out of the way quickly. To sorry about that, guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> I love that song. I love that song. I always have it ready to play. So I'm just going to move these guys out of the way so I can introduce you to a few other factions that you might be willing to play in Age of Sigma. So as I said, you have the Fire Slayers. And this guy here is a Fire Slayer. I've painted him to have sort of a blue flaming beard. But as you can see, he's very sort of traditional barbarian like dwarf. And he runs around in his loincloth and with his uh, runes blazing on his back. And these guys are uh, one of the factions that you can play for order. Another faction that you might want to play, maybe you, you really do like those traditional trips and you want to play as a race of men. Well, that's perfectly fantastic. There is an entire army called the Free Peoples, and they do that. They are You have the traditional uh, ranks of soldiers, you have wizards, you have griffins, everything from Total War Warhammer, actually. To be honest, if you play Empire, that's what the Free People are. They've become uh, their own faction from the Empire. And finally, as I mentioned earlier, who doesn't like tree people, a race of tree people, I'll try and just focus on, on her a little bit so you can get the details. There you go. Race of tree people who are um, basically just trying to keep their forests safe from everybody who just keeps trampling in them and trying to steal their soul pods, which are kind of their souls, and um, which, well, the name gives it away, and uh, to uh, fight off against the force of trying to destroy their forests. Maybe that's what you want to do. Anyway, these are just a few examples of the forces of order. Now, there's a second part to this video. I'm going to end it in a moment just here, but there's a second part to this video that's going to be on the sister channel uh, to this get to this Many More Games channel. It's the Twisted Shadows channel, and we'll be doing a second video over there, myself and, uh, and Kitten, Twisted Shadows, about the forces of chaos, the forces of the evil races, and what they look like and why she likes those so much. So thank you very much for turning it, uh, tuning in for another series of many more games. And I will be putting links to those different um, things that I've mentioned in the comment section below. Please, 
like, please subscribe. It really helps the channel. And also, um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you very much for listening and keep gaming.